What if I was to tell you that we sort of know how Tears of the Kingdom begins? And I know there's a lot of people that are like, man, we start out on the Sky Islands. And sure, I think that plays a role. But thanks to some leaks we have had, um, spoilers, I suppose I should warn you about right now. Turn away from this video if you don't want to be spoiled. Of course, if you clicked on the video wanting to know how the game begins, I presume you're okay with a certain amount of spoilers. Anyways, we're going to get into this in a moment. First, I want to remind you we are on our road to 100,000 subscribers. Hell, we had 1,000 new subscribers in the last 24 hours. You guys are insane. Thank you so much. Uh, if we happen to get there by the time Tears of the Kingdom comes out, we're going to give away a collector's edition of the game. We're also going to give away a Zelda Tears of the Kingdom Switch OLED and one of those pins that you could only get at PAX East. Might be planning some other stuff as well. We're going to blow it out with a nice little celebration. That being said, let's talk about this stuff. And first off, we need to talk about the beginning of the game. It's very evident from the gameplay when Link has four hearts that we're at the beginning of the game, right? We usually start with three. Maybe you get your fourth at the com at the completion of some sort of thing, some sort of event. In Breath of the Wild, it was you beat the four shrines. You could turn that in and get your fourth heart, etc. Turn in those spirit orbs. So... Obviously, we're at the very beginning of the game in the gameplay we've seen so far, but this isn't the actual beginning of the game. And I think some people know this because we have seen Link's arm not be messed up already in trailers. Well, one thing that has become super obvious after the gameplay released and we got more information is that the art book leak we got earlier wasn't just a bunch of concept art. See, the theory this whole time surrounding the art book leak is how much does it really matter because a lot of the art in an art book is probably just potential ideas, not things that actually made it into the game. But here's the problem. After we got that 10 plus minutes of gameplay, a ton of stuff in the art book appeared in the gameplay, essentially inferring that everything in the art book is actually just art chosen specifically from aspects they have put in the game. And that now makes the art book leaks even more valuable for people that want additional information. Now, we're not going to sit here and go over every single page in the art book because, again, Nintendo would probably be a little mad. They already didn't like when we went over 50 of them. But I'm going to bring up a few examples. Uh, one of them is that the beginning of the game, right? This is what we're focused on now. We're not going to start right away in the sky, or at least we're not going to start right away in the sky with Link's arm messed up. I guess I should clarify that. And we know this from the art book because we have a couple of images that, again, to me, this isn't super spoilery because we sort of can assume this based on prior trailers. But we have this first image where it's Link in Zelda in some sort of underground or some sort of temple of some sorts. And Link appears to be following Zelda, who's leading the way and maybe even translating some of the text that she sees. Uh, it's a very cool thing. We see the Master Sword on Link's back. Link in his traditional garb. Uh, his arm isn't messed up at this point. And everything's looking just like, hey, this is some continuation of Breath of the Wild. And then there's another image in the art book where Link is again following Princess Zelda down a cave of sorts. So we could sort of connect this to the trailers we've seen already where they're traveling together in some sort of underground area. And this is where they end up bumping into Calamity Ganon. We know that stuff explodes from his chest and attacks the sword. And somehow, somewhere in there, Link's arm gets messed up. We don't really know exactly what happens because we haven't seen the full cutscene and we haven't played the game. But that's clearly how the game begins. And then we probably at some point when Link is laying down, as we see in the one trailer with his arm already messed up, whatever he wakes up from that, which again, Link waking up from something, what a shocking beginning to gameplay, uh, we end up on some Sky Island somewhere where we learn the initial abilities that Link has, including um, Ascend, uh, Rewind, I guess it's not called Rewind, right? It's called Recall, uh, and then obviously Fuse and was that master hand, right? Something like that. So that's, that's his four abilities that he has. So look, I'm really excited that this sort of is starting to piece together where there's clearly a big event that happens at the beginning of the game, whether or not part of that event is playable or not. I don't know, but it's definitely an event. And then it leads to link being asleep again in some sort of resurrection pool again, or some sort of healing thing. And then we, we, we probably open up on a sky Island, that sky Island. We actually saw that bigger one, 
uh, at the beginning of, the, well, not really the beginning, later on in the trailer when they say, hey, now we're on a bigger Sky Island. Well, that bigger Sky Island is probably the first Sky Island we visit, uh, and that's when we realize we're up in the air and we're like, what the hell is going on? And there's probably some story elements that happen along the way. So that seems to be how the game begins. But there's just so many interesting points, and I want to bring up uh, some stuff that we now know is true from the art book. Again, this is not really spoilers per se, here because this is obviously stuff we've already seen, but just to provide evidence of stuff in the Arctic happened. As an example, the Zonai charge that everyone got excited about. Yeah, that was in the art book, but let's provide a bit more evidence. We saw a brief instance of a ranger construct. He didn't, uh, you know, Aonuma didn't really interact with the ranger construct, but we have seen that ranger construct in the art book before it was revealed. Uh, moving on, obviously the swirls and the rocks, we've seen some various evidence of that as well with glowing orbs and swirls and rocks and potential temples and, and stuff like this in the official art. Uh, also the golem that like slams into the ground uh, that that you know we've seen in a prior trailer. Well, we have some images showing at least aspects of that golem existing in the art book. Even the wheel that we see on the, the, the infamous lawnmower Hey, that was technically in the art book as well. Also, there seems to be an item in the inventory, some sort of weird sphere with some green ooze. We're not really sure what it is yet. And yes, that was in the art book as well. Also, if you zoom in on a certain part of the world, we can see what um, some sort of machine that has been titled a gumball machine, basically. And yeah, that was in the art book too. So look, obviously, it, it, it's pretty clear at this point, everything in the art book is probably in the game and that makes the art book just such a massive spoiler and you can understand why maybe nintendo was pretty upset about these things i just think it's interesting to observe you know figure out different aspects of this game before the game comes out and just be really really excited about tears of the kingdom together because together we are going to go on an epic adventure of many many epic proportions when you got triple a developers being just in awe of what they have seen so far. We've barely seen anything. Um, I also want to address one thing. Uh, I, I've seen some arguments about the the whole, this still looks like DLC thing, and a lot of it has to do with the visuals. Uh, what I find interesting is when someone grabbed a screenshot of the horse riding in this game versus Breath of the Wild said, hey, can you spot the difference? And then they mentioned, I bet you if I put up an image of Majora's Mask and Ocarina of Time, I could tell the difference. And you know why you could tell the difference between horse riding in Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask? Because there's a day-night cycle on the bottom. Otherwise, it kind of looks identical. The point is, sequels are supposed to look like each other. The Last of Us 1, 2, and 3 look like each other, right? Like, that's just, that's, that, that's what sequels are. I think people forget that a direct sequel is supposed to visually be pretty much the same. Will there be some minor enhancements? Sure. Maybe you expected more enhancements, but if they use that processing power for gameplay instead, increasing draw distance instead, then I think that's a better use than necessarily saying, hey, let's make things look prettier. Now you could argue that's what we need to switch to for, and maybe there is some sort of 4K crazy upscaled version of this game that exists that Nintendo can't show us right now because the new system isn't announced. But I'm just pointing out that I'm pretty happy by what we've seen so far, and I can't wait to see more. I mean, I think it's pretty obvious we're going to see more. Uh, the producer of the Zelda series hinted himself that this is all he could show for now, suggesting they will be showing more later. So yeah, I'm pretty excited. I hope you guys are too. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video. Yeah.